right here. All right, here we go. Was it nine thirty? All right, bet we on we on go a little track. We'll probably finish this up in like an hour and a half. Tommy's story probably be about probably about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, depending on if we get distracted or not. Then we got damn, we still got Maria. Yeah, we just got Maria and Miguel. The feds ain't do shit. Feds ain't do nothing. Feds ain't do a damn thing this week. I mean, DeFranco got he got that pressure on uh Vic, but Vic went and told Stacy what he knows. He's about to work with them. So yeah, other than that, yeah, we just got Tommy and then the Garcia family. That ain't bad. <clears throat> Tommy. All right, man. Here we go. We got the Tommy story, man. Well, one thing I can say about Tommy Egan is Tommy Egan does what Tommy Egan wants to do. If we're just going to be honest, Tommy Egan does what Tommy Egan wants to do. Tommy Egan really doesn't care too much about what's going on in the world. As long as as long as it's not like fucking with him or his money or his aspirations and dreams, then we really don't have any issues. The only problem is we don't necessarily know what Tommy is trying to do. No one has gave me a, a end goal per se for Tommy Egan. You know, James St. Patrick, we're going to always harp on this. James St. Patrick, go legit. You know what I'm saying? Lieutenant Governor, get out the game. Politics, go legit. Uh, Rashad Tate, get into Congress, go legit. Will he still do some dirty things? Yeah, but go legit. What's old boy name? The coolest lawyer in New York City. He wanted to get his brother out of there, but now he wants to get everybody out there's Rico. And will he go legit? Probably not, but he still has a goal. Tommy has no goal. Tommy has no drive. There's no end date. There's no expiration on the game for time. You know, you go buy milk. You always move the milk and you try to get the milk in the very back. You want to see whoever got the longest expiration date. You don't ever want to grab that first one. First of all, you don't know if somebody opened that mug up. I never grab the first of anything. I always go to like the second, the third, the fourth. You know what I mean? You got to always get the one in the back. But you got to check that expiration date. You might go up there and buy some bread. They always put the bread that's going to expire first in the front to get it up out of there so it don't expire while it's on the shelf. Now, you might go up there. What's today? The 29th? It might say it expires on the 6th. But you go into the back, you see one that expires on the 13th. Why am I going to pay the same price for something I can only use in the next, what, seven days? When I can go get something in the back for the next 14 days, two weeks. I got two weeks. I don't want to eat a sandwich every day of the week. Who wants to eat a sandwich every single day for seven days straight? No, but when that 14 span, I might eat a sandwich today. I might chill tomorrow. There's no rush. When I buy my cereal, I got to eat cereal every single day. So why would I buy the milk that expires on the 6th when I can get the milk that expired on the 12th and get some extra days and be drinking my milk? You know what I mean? Because after one day of expiration, Mo don't fuck with that. I don't even waste my time. I always felt like when I was younger, I ate something that was expired and I threw up. So ever since then, if something is expired by one day, hell, even the day of, I'm hesitant on eating it. Ever since I was a young boy playing with my toys, I ate some expired food and I ain't been right since. I, Whenever I see something expired, I cry. I go to my parents' house. I look in the pantry. I cry. I'm like, man, what? When I first came back in 2017, this is no lie. Like, my dad still buys food even now to, like, it's 100 people living there, but it's just him and my mama. Man, I was in the pantry. My mom told me to get the damn pot off the top. It's like the top shelves she can't get. My dad was out on the grill, so I'm getting the shit down. And then she was like, hey, look up there and see if we got something. And I started looking in there. I had to move some shit. And this is like 2000. Yeah, this is 2017 when I got back. I looked. Man, something was up in the cabinet that said expired 2012. I said, man, what the fuck, man? Y'all trying to kill a nigga over here. Mama just looking at something expired. Make me, mm. 
But ever since then, man, I don't do expired. But I say all that to say, what is his expiration date? What is Tommy's end goal? He's been on the block for 10 seasons. Six, three in uh, Tariq's, that's nine. One year made 10. This is 11. This is 11 seasons that he's been in, well, alive for. What is his end goal? He about 40 now, man. He's still in the game. What, what, what are you trying to do, Tommy? What's next for Tom? You know what I mean? At what point are we going to say, hey, you know what? Let's make a left up here instead of a right this time. Let's just go left. Let's just see what's going on. Tommy's catching bodies every episode. We love it. Don't get me wrong. We love it. He's catching bodies episode every episode. He's beefing with different cartels, different organizations every episode. Don't get me wrong. We love it. Car is shot up, put it in the shop just to get it back out. When the car is supposed to be gone, he got the car fixed up. He went on driver lessons. He's speeding through the streets of Chicago. He killed a man at a zoo. I don't know if y'all remember, but Tommy killed a man at a zoo. Now, if I can't go to a zoo with the family without seeing a dead body in the damn bathroom stall, what have we came to? What kind of world do we live in? But then I had to take a step back and say, Mo, what are you talking about? I said, man, I don't know what's going on. They said, Mo, you got to remember, this is the power universe, and you telling Tommy's story. So you got to understand, there's going to be some fucked up shit going down because Tommy fucking Egan is the topic of our discussion. And Tommy Egan, damn, about nothing. Talking about T-Mac, shut up. Not a D Mac. Let's tell your dad that you killed a cop. He said, D Mac, sh- shut up. Sh- 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 shut up. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I said, damn, this nigga Tommy is different. We fuck with it though, man. We definitely fuck with it. I can say this. I do not knock it. I do not knock it. <laughs> See, he talking to uh D Mac, but we already know D Mac Silas. Come on, Uncle Tommy, you give me the guns back. Come on, I can't be out there naked. It's me, Tommy. Man, I fucked up, man. They gonna throw my life away. They're trying to get me murdered for a cop, Tommy. Come on, Unc, what am I gonna do? He said, we ain't gonna do nothing. You gonna lay low. I'm gonna take care of everything. Come on, Tommy. Come on, let me get this right, man. Let me help, man. What can I do, man? I don't wanna go to jail, man. I wanna go back to school. I wanna get an education. Now, whenever somebody in trouble, now niggas want to go get their education. Now niggas want to go read books. Now niggas want to go show up to class on time. All before this, D-Mac wasn't saying none of this. Talking about I want to get an education. They're going to send me to jail. When he was shooting guns last year, he didn't care. He didn't think about nothing last year. But as soon as some real life shit happens, come on, Uncle Tommy, man. <laughs> They're going to send me to jail for life, man. Like, damn, D-Mac, calm your ass down. Tommy ain't giving a fuck, though. Tommy, it's Tommy Egan, so he don't give a fuck. He just like, hey, chill, nigga. Uh, Bennigan, we took care of that. We took care of Bennigan. We got the text message. It's handled. It's handled. And look at Tommy's face. When he got that text message saying it's handled, I know he was looking at uh, D-Mac like, man, shut the fuck up. At this point, we're starting to see, excuse me, we're starting to see that angry Tommy. Now, we always joke around, Tommy got the punchlines, but sometimes we forget. When we when we joke around and say that Tommy is a superhero, he's a uh, he's an action hero, we, we forget sometimes that Tommy has emotions. He has feelings also. And when he gets pissed, Tommy goes off on everybody, every family member. He has went off on. Think about it. Every family member except for uh uh except for Raina and uh old girl. What's the little girl name? I forgot her name. She was the realest one. What's the little sister's name? Tariq Raina, and what's the little sister's name? Man, you know, I don't be remembering. What's the little sister? Yes, yes. 
other than Raina and Yaz, Tommy has went off on every single family member. Ghost, Tasha, Tariq, JP, D-Mac, Kate, Teresi. It don't matter. If you were related to Tommy Egan, he's going to go off on you. He wanted to kill Tasha. He wanted to kill Tariq. He wanted to kill James. He killed his dad. He wanted to kill his mom. He killed Holly and his baby. Well, I don't know if he wanted to kill JP in, uh, in D-Mac, but he was mad at him. It's really starting to look like Tommy really doesn't need any friends. Tommy is a character. It's starting to look like we might need to... I'm, I'm trying to tell Tommy's story, but Tommy's story is kind of fucked up, ain't it? We, we keep saying that Tommy might be the realest and the most trustworthy, but man... Tommy has tried to kill everybody related to him. Tommy's been going after Eric. He, he almost threw Tariq off a roof. He pulled up on Tasha. He was supposed to kill her, but she talked him out of it. He shot unarmed Angela trying to kill James. He killed Teresi. Teresi was too old to be doing anything. Oh, he got rid of Holly. Yeah, man, this guy's, uh, he killed his kid. His kid wasn't even here yet, and he got, man, come on, Tommy. That's fucked up. Yeah, they say you didn't know, but man, you still didn't have to kill Holly. I don't know, man. Tommy is what Drake was saying. No new friends. No new friends. No new new. One time. All we ask Tommy to do is keep it 100. That's all we ask. Well, shout out to my dog, Jeremiah, the Canadian plug, man. In the Canadian plug, my dog Jeremiah. He said, Mo, you don't mess with Drake. I was like, I ain't got nothing against Drake. I know his song, but I don't listen to his music like that. They play the song, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Tommy over here, he handled the situation. He talks to Diamond. Diamond, we know he's about to get shot up. He about to get shot up. And when's the next time we see Tommy? Oh, Tommy show up. He got that Mustang fixed. Hey, shout out to Brillo. Brillo said it's going to be, um, he wouldn't be surprised if it was one episode. It's been what, two? Two episodes? So Brillo was right. He said, was, I thought they were going to get rid of it for the whole season, but Brillo was right. Nah, 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 nah. That, Jeremiah, that's my dog, man. Uh, damn, if he's in here, if anybody got Jeremiah's link to his YouTube, you can go ahead and post that for my dog, man. You know what I mean? That's but he shows back up. He got the Mustang out the shop. And he wants to make sure that everything is all right. Now we know that the plan is about to go in effect. We already heard about King Kilo. That's the good thing about Tommy's story. Most of the shit we already heard about, so all we got to do is fill in the blanks from Tommy because we already know how deep these situations can get. Tommy's like, all right, listen. Samson, Samus, Seamus, whatever the fuck his name was, Bennigan, the cop, whatever. You got rid of him, you said it was handled right. Where was it? Where's the body? He said, Tommy, I'm not telling you none of that. Now, Tommy wants to know all of this information just to make sure that it's taken care of. Now, Diamond flips the script and says, hey, Tommy, you're asking me all of these questions, but are you sure that you actually handled the business that you were supposed to handle? You know, they say, mind the business that pays you. And I was always like, man, I don't know what business pays me. If I hear something, that's my business. You know what I mean? If I see something, that is my business. Now, it's my business if I'm going to give up that information to somebody else. But if I heard it or saw it, that is now my business information. You know what I'm saying? That's the information I'm going to use for my business. You know what I mean? That's information to feed my business. Now, DMAC is outside. DMAC is outside talking to the police. Now, we don't know if he's giving up any answers or any information about what's been going on. We're all assuming he didn't because Marshall was out there also, and Marshall's true to the game. Marshall says CBI is really getting some money out here. Now, does DMAC have a Thule on him? There's no telling. There's no telling at this point. Maybe he got another one off the streets. Who knows? Who knows? 
but you need to go out there and check DMAC time. You need to go out there right now, check DMAC, and let it be known that, hey, you around. He snatches D Mac up. The fuck are you doing, man? What the fuck are you doing out here? Hey, Tommy. Mac. Tommy, what are you doing to my boy? Tommy, let him go. D Mac, go upstairs. What's going on here? You're not going to touch my son like that, Tommy. And Tommy's like, D Mac, get upstairs. But Uncle Tommy, Uncle Tommy, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't talking to nobody. Tommy, get your hands off him. Like, damn. Damn, he on his ass. He said, what the fuck you want, man? You sound like that, Tommy. I'm trying to be a good plenum. You don't need to talk to him that way. That only hinders his growth and his thought process. His self-conscious is going into the, the, the shit because of you, Tommy. All of this is because of you, Tommy. And Tommy is like, oh no, don't you don't you even dare put this on me. You were gay and your wife left you. Don't you put this on me. If you were in your son's life, then we wouldn't be having these DMAC problems. DMAC wouldn't be running around the city. Oh, that, that's a low blow, Tommy. That's a low blow. How can you use me and my wife not being together against me? Oh, but I am because you came in here and you questioned me. You don't even know what the fuck is going on, JP. Well, if I don't know, then why don't you tell me, Tommy? I can't tell you right now, brother. I can't tell you right now. Well, then why make all the ruckus, Tommy? Why all the ruckus if you can't explain to me why you can't tell me about DMAC? Why, Tommy? Why? And Tommy's like, man, look, I'm just telling you, it's best you don't know. Plausible de deniability. When you go to court, they, they ask you, JP, did you know about the whereabouts of DMAC when he shot a cop in the back of his head? All you had to do is say no because you did not know. But if I give you that information, if I give you that information, then that information becomes your business. That information becomes you. I told y'all that a minute ago because I'm going to connect the dots for you. I'm going to connect the dots for you. That's what I do. Subscribe to the channel. My name is Moda J, man. We're going to have a little week break, but damn it, I'm good Whatever what I do, man. I ain't going to lie to you. When it comes to breaking the show down, don't nobody break a show down like Mo break a show down. Mo break a show down how a show is supposed to be broken down. And all I'm going to do is give you a little bit of facts. You ain't got to believe me, but I'm going to show you on screen and back everything with some evidence. Now, Tommy, only I can yell at JP. Wait, I'm JP. DMAC, get down here. Damn it, you got me confused. What did you do? What did you do? Tommy's like, man, we can't tell you that shit, man. We can't tell you that shit, man. Called a body about a week ago. Nigga, what you want me to tell you, JP? I can't tell you nothing. Well, I'm the father. I need to know what my son is doing, Tommy. If you that, you need to talk to me first so I can have an understanding and I can grasp the situation. Damn it, Tommy. You're in my house. Like, damn, JP, calm down. We trying to figure out what the fuck happened with D-Mac. I heard D-Mac shot somebody, but that ain't my business. That ain't my business, but I heard that. I don't know who I heard that from. I can't confirm or deny it. I'm just saying I heard that. That's my business. That information is now my business. You know what I mean? That is now my business. Now, they say mind the business that pays you, but if I get information, that becomes my business. <laughs> and it's paying me nothing, but I'm paying attention to what the fuck is being said. So <laughs> the attention... It's what's getting paid. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying attention. You know what I'm so that business does pay me. And JP, we can't tell you the business at this moment, JP. It's still too fresh, JP. We can't tell you the information. And Tommy's trying to say everything that I'm saying without saying what I'm saying because he don't want JP to know that I'm saying that d Mac shot a nigga in the back of the head. Damn, I'm just trying to say I'm saying that Tommy knows that D Mac knows that he shot somebody in the back of the head, but if JP knows about it, if they question JP, then JP and know about it. He has to tell. He has to tell. And the reason all that happens is because if they take the stand and they say, Hey, D Mac, if D Mac takes the stand and they say, Hey, D Mac, was JP in the house that day? 
when Tommy was yelling at you, if they ever found out this information. If he says yes, then that means, wait a minute, if he says yes, that means, wait, his business, that information goes over to JP. JP has to take the stand. He can plead the fifth if he want to, unless they subpoena him and give him some trumped up charges. Then he's going to have to take the stand and say, yes, I did here. But that's why they saying we can't tell you what's happening, JP. Tommy is smart when it comes to this legal shit. Tommy's been doing this for 11 different seasons. Tommy has been living in the power universe. Seven, I know 11 different seasons. Technically, technically 13, but we don't see Tommy in the uh, Raising Canaan series, even though we know he's born. We technically don't see him, so it's technically 13. But we're just saying the 11 from Ghost and Force and the OG. He knows the law. I can't tell you this, JP. Well, damn, Tommy, I thought we were partners. I thought when you moved in and we started the drugs together, we were a partnership. I need to know what is going on with Junior. But we can't tell JP none of that shit right now, man. JP, chill, man. Kick back, bro. Kick back, man. JP asking all these police-ass questions. Man, back up, man. Back up, man. The fuck out of here, JP. Got that hair slicked back like a motherfucker. JP ain't did shit. Wait a minute, JP. We said we were doing JP's story with Tommy's story. Man, this nigga ain't did shit in weeks. The last time we saw this nigga, D-Mac was catching a body, man. Hell no, nah, JP. We ain't forget about you. We was about to go to Tommy's next appearance on TV. Hell no. Nah. This nigga D Max dad, JP, ain't did shit in a couple episodes, man. We ain't forgetting about that. You released the motherfucking the Dahlia recipe. That's all you've done this year. JP ain't been doing nothing but kicking it. JP got money coming in. He got a new wardrobe. But guess what? Guess what, man? He got a new wardrobe, but the house still ain't fixed. Holes still in the wall. JP ain't doing shit. No, hell no, JP. We ain't letting that one go. Hell no, JP. JP on some other shit, man. I might have to watch a Tubi movie when I get off. Man, man, fuck that. We might watch a Tubi movie tonight. I don't even know, man. I'm feeling in a good mood right now. I'm in a big mood. You know what I mean? Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling. Yeah. I get a feeling that I never, never, never knew that I never flow. Whoa, whoa. I've never been. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. JP has been chilling for the last fucking five episodes, man. JP ain't putting in no work. JP ain't cooking up no Dahlia. JP ain't rocking up no rocks. JP ain't putting no bricks together. JP ain't shipping nothing. This nigga was playing the piano at the fucking club when his son had the toolie on him and popped the cop. What are we talking about? JP talking about Tommy? No, ain't no Tommy, nigga. Get to, well, look, he came out the back. Where was this nigga even at? What room is back here on the other side of the kitchen? The living room? He just said, nah, they in the living room. What's in the dining room? Man, what the fuck? Let me see what room is over there on the other side of the house, man. What was JP doing in here? No, nah, man, hell no. Nah. JP, this, we ain't letting this one slide. No, nah, JP. You've been getting by, man. You've been skating up under the radar. We ain't had a good conversation about JP in a minute. Tommy, your story's going to have to wait, brother. You're going to have to wait, Tommy. I apologize to everyone that was tuning in for Tommy. But no, nah, this, this, mm -mm. someone has to hold JP accountable. Someone has to do something for JP because JP's really getting by, man. We think Tommy's a bad guy. Yeah, we get it. But no, nah, this nigga is different. No, wait, this is the living room because this is where D-Mac can't. What, the, does the room wrap around? Like, where was he coming from? Kitchen, the back door. So I guess it wraps around the dining room into the living room. So he was just sitting in the dining room doing what? Man, it's a it's a hole in this wall. Man, it's kind of drafty in here, ain't it? It's kind of drafty in here, ain't it? Man, this house. Hold on, let me see. So we got we got this hole here in the kitchen. So we okay, we got the front door. You come in, uh, you come in the front door, you go up the stairs, you got the living room. So it must be the dining room he was sitting in. All right, bet. 
But we got this hole here in the kitchen. Yeah, so he was, I guess he was just sitting in the dining room. You know I'm going to find out what's going on because he came around the kitchen side. We got this hole right here, right next to the drawer where he put the gun. JP in here writing lyrics and shit. This nigga need to be writing applications out. He need to be filling out some applications. So he was in the, oh, that's what he was doing. JP was in the damn dining room playing the piano. We didn't found him, y'all. We didn't found where JP was in there playing the piano. Oh, it makes sense. Uh, Kendall, I have no idea where their dad is. I thought he died last season. I don't even know. They threw his ass in the basement. <laughs> I said, Grandma, you, I mean, Grandpa, you gonna stay in the basement. JP was in here composing music. Oh, okay. We found out. You see what we doing? That's why we need these live shows where we can connect the dots. So he came out the dining room. We know he plays the piano. He's writing down uh, musical notes here, trying to com compose a song. He was over at the keyboard, just do no 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 do please stay with me tonight don't leave me girl uncle tommy man what hey hey what are you doing <laughs> this nigga's in here playing the damn piano man big wolf said no hat on the table you don't put hats on tables and you don't put hats on beds Hats on beds is good. I mean, not good luck, bad luck. Do not put hats on beds. People don't believe in luck enough. Something, something that I don't ever put a hat on a bed. But yeah, JP ain't did shit in weeks, man. Playing the piano. He don't know what the hell's going on in D Max life. D Max been shot up. Man, if my son got shot, my son's never leaving the house unless I'm with him. I know D Mac don't go to school. He ain't about to be just hanging out. And if I'm going to work, then he's going to work with me. He's going to be right there with me at the motherfucking bar reading a book or something. Damn. Damn. They done got our boy, y'all. They done got our boy. Next time we see Uncle Tommy... Damn, I don't even know. It's a while before we see Tommy, ain't it? Nah, I ain't superstitious. Very superstitious. <laughs> nah, I ain't superstitious. I just don't put hats on beds for some reason. I don't know. Hats on bed just don't sound like it's right. It don't sound like it's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Hats on bed just don't sound like the right thing to do. <laughs> well, Tommy finally folds and he gives JP that information. He tells JP, I don't know any other way to tell you this, but... Let me get comfortable, y'all. Let me, let me, let me get comfortable. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Listen, JP. D Mac fucked up. Um, you remember that gun that I gave you the other week, the other day, or whatever it was? I can't even remember. But you remember I gave you a a, a weapon, correct? Well, D Mac took that gun and. I don't know any easy way to say this. He shot a cop in the back of the head. What? Tommy, don't you tell me nothing like that. D-Mac, D-Mac, get down here right now. Tommy, this is all your fault. Tommy, I don't know what you did with D-Mac, but you were wrong. This is all on you. Everything since you came to Chicago is on you. Now, I don't know what you're going to do to fix this, See, I'm losing JP's voice, man. I can't do JP's voice for too long. <clears throat> yeah, I ain't gonna be able to do JP no more. <laughs> Hell no, nah, that JP shit. Oh, <clears throat> uh, let me get some. 
Hey, hit that like. No, no, no. Fuck it. We're gonna finish it. I'll, I'll get some, I'll get some drink later. But I ain't gonna, I can't do JP's voice no more. About... <clears throat> but he gets mad at Tommy because he got a lot of yelling to do. I... It's, it's increments, you know what I mean? Here, two minutes, another day, maybe 30 seconds today. But yeah, JP's voice is canceled for the evening, y'all. I can't hey, you gotta go back to regular voice. But <clears throat> Tommy's talking to him and he tells him, man, look. A cop in the back of the head, and don't you try to put all this on me. But JP is also talking about hey, this is all because of you, man. You, you, you go look in the mirror, Tommy. Go look in the mirror, man. It's you, Tommy. Get a text message talking about hey, big smurf. I need something from you. He's like, listen, JP, you trusted me last season, correct? $196,000 in debt, correct? I helped you move that greasy ass oven. I remember. Listen, best thing for him to do is to lay low. Now, no one has seen D-Mac. D-Mac, because remember, he said, take your time. Go buy the cigarettes. Go buy the condoms. A box of condoms nowadays is like 15 bucks. It's expensive as hell to be safe. But you got to spend that bread, man. Don't be out here wilding out. Don't be out here wilding out. I mean, shout out to the people that do wild out, but to the rest of us as Mo West, we don't wild out. We did wild out back in the day, but we ain't wilding out no more. You know what I mean? We ain't wilding out no more unless I'm trying to think of a scenario. Unless it's a a, a Friday afternoon, roughly 82 degrees, but it feels like 87 degrees, cool little breeze, clear skies, and we on the beach. Now, if that happens, now that's an exception to going wild out. But everyone else, now Tommy is hitting up Big Smurf because we know what's going to come out of this, a potential kidnapping to get DMAC up and out the way. Now, when this text message originally went down, I didn't know that it was going to have anything to do with DMAC. I thought it was going to be, hey, I need you to go check on Diamond or something of that nature, asking DMAC, I mean, not DMAC, uh, Big Smurf to go do something in furtherance of the organization. CBI. I didn't know that this text message, hey, I need you to go. What did you guys think when Tommy sent this message off? When Tommy got this message sent, he drafted it up and sent it after telling JP, I got your back. I'm going to make sure nephew is fine. What were you thinking he was telling Big Smurf to do? Did you guys envision a kidnapping? I ain't going to lie to you. I had no idea that a kidnapping would happen. Hey, Big Smurf, I need you to do something for me. I'm like, what? what? Is something I can do. I'm all over it. Hey, man, I did not tell Google. The phone going to say, as long as it's something I can do, I'll do it. Hey, man, let me close this motherfucking phone because I was not talking to you. What time is it in Chicago? The time in Chicago, Illinois is 9.57 p.m. on Friday. Damn, 9.57 p.m. They about to go pick up DMAC. Hey, let me ask y'all something. Do you guys know anybody that watches the show on Friday when it comes out? Or does does a majority of you guys, do a majority of you, do, you, do y'all watch it off of the app? How do y'all watch y'all stars? I mean, I know some of y'all watch it off of some, you know what I'm saying, some sites. But do, do, do a majority of y'all watch it off of the, the app? So y'all watch it at midnight or do y'all wait till Friday when it actually comes out? Dublin needs that income for the calls. Oh, Elder, Dublin is done, man. Dublin is done. They need to go do business in maybe like in Kentucky or something. Dublin don't need to be in any of the big major cities. Now, I know Chicago Central Time Zone. I was just doing it, you know what I'm saying, for the people that aren't in the Midwest because I'm on the same time, so I knew it was 957. But I'm just trying to say it's 957. This is when that text message went out, 957. He's telling Big Spurve to go pick up D-Mac. D-Mac been gone since like three something. D-Mac been out and about for a while. 
not only is he out and about, remember, he came to the house uh, after the shooting. Tommy talked to him. They found him out talking to the police. Tommy snatches him up, tells him to go upstairs. That's when Kate tells him to leave, and he's been gone ever since. So this is why they're sending him out to go find him. Sixty six said, "I watched Friday morning on demand, midnight stars out demand on Friday morning." Okay, so a majority of us watch it at midnight, midnight on the app, or they'd watch the the, uh, the, the on demand in the morning. Okay. Because I was trying to see, do people actually watch the show like when it airs tonight? Because it normally airs on a Friday if you don't have the app or anything. If you just got like regular cable, not on demand. If you just got regular cable with the Stars package, it usually don't come on to like 8 or 9 on a Friday. I was just wondering if people will actually watch it on a Friday. The same with the Sunday night. I, I enjoyed when the show came out Saturday night at midnight, especially during the pandemic and like towards the end of it because shit, I wasn't going out on a Saturday night. Fuck all that. All right, let's continue with the story. That's on me, y'all. I was just I was just trying to see where everybody was at. Just trying to see where everybody was at. I watch here in Jamaica and B Flicks. Okay. What up, Xavier? Jamaica. Hey man, I come down to Jamaica, man. You gotta show me around. You know, I gotta get down to Jamaica too. Jamaica, the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Hey, get down there. I haven't I haven't ever been to the Caribbean. All the places in the world I've never been to the Caribbean. Been to Latin America, but I never made it to the Caribbean. Oh, let's continue this story, man. Y'all don't care about that shit. All right. Tommy sets up the kidnapping of D-Mac. We know that D-Mac gets picked up. And the family is back to talking. The family's back to talking. And we're starting to realize that. Look at JP ass. <laughs> Look at JP, man. I know he's hurting, though, Pauls. I know he's hurting because it is his son at the end of the day. We joke around about JP, but JP has been trying to be in D-Mac's life. So even though we joke around about him, his character, we, I know we he didn't have enough of a storyline this week for me to give him a whole story, so that's why we branched him off of Tommy's. But from his perspective, it's like, man, I just got my son back, and he's wilding out. Tommy, you told me you was going to look out for my son. You didn't want him to be in the game. You've been looking out for me. So I'm accept, uh, expecting that standard to be the same. But you not telling me that my son killed somebody, especially a cop, that's bad, man. Like, we supposed to be closer than that. Now, Tommy is understanding that F is for family, and he's like, man, you might be right about that. That's on me. I apologize. But they sit here, and they came up with a plan together. Now, that's the good thing. We can't knock. JP and Tommy's relationship. Because as I mentioned earlier, and we started to see this a lot this episode, pay close attention that people's bonds that may have not been as good as they were or they wanted them to be, they started to unify them. Polly, Walt, they made up. Jannard, Diamond, they made up. And Tommy, JP, they made up. You know what I mean? They came together and they solved their problem. All it took was a little bit of conversation. If you were back on my channel years ago, back when we first started, conversation rules the nation. That's what we used to always say. Conversation rules the nation. If you can just take a second, remove your feelings, your emotions, and just say what it is, and y'all talk it out, in the end, you can walk it out. These two devised the plan to get JP's son, D-Mac, or should I say Darnell? Why am I calling this young man D-Mac? D-Mac is the kid of the streets. Now, we're removing the kid from the streets, and they're sending him off to the country. Become a farmer, man. Get some discipline. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need structure in your life. Sometimes you need a schedule to abide by. Man, the way I've been living these last five years is disgusting. Sleep until noon, one in the afternoon. Oh, oh, disgusting lifestyle. Sometimes you need structure. I was lost. I was lost. I didn't know which way was up. I said, I need something to do. So that's when I started the YouTube. When I got out the military, I started the YouTube. I said, I need something to do to keep me busy. 
January of 2018, I put together a skit, one of my first videos on YouTube, and I just stuck with it. I stuck with it. And then I said, you know what? I'm getting too old to be getting up and jumping around and acting a damn fool. So I said, man, I'm going to talk about TV shows. I started talking about power. I needed some structure. I needed some structure. Talked about power. Then we got power spinoffs. I needed some structure, though. I didn't know. My sister told me, hey, start live streaming. I started live streaming. I didn't know. I needed some structure. Then I got a, a little solid, you know what I'm saying, following, you know what I'm saying? A little, I won't even call it like a fan base. I got the Mo West with me. So I said, I need some structure. The Mo West said, hey, Mo, we want you to go live a little bit more. Mo, we want you to talk about this. We want you to do that. I said, I need some structure. Sometimes you need guidance. Sometimes you need somebody to reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Now, there was no structure for me, but now we got us a little schedule. And just like our schedule, DMAC is about to have a schedule. Get your ass up at 445. Get your ass washed. Get your ass to the farm. Get your ass to milking the goat. And by the time you finish the goat, it should be 6 a.m. Come get breakfast. Head to class from 6.30 to 12. From 12 to 1.35, you're going to have some free time. 1.45, we got PT till 3 o'clock. Then it's time to cook dinner and clean this motherfucker up. And we're going to do it again because lights out is 9, but we're moving it to 8.30 because Claudia did not give the information to Vic. Yeah, you need some structure in your life sometime. And that's exactly what they about to get this nigga D-Mac. D-Mac needs some structure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tommy said, I got something for you. Xavier said, I'm here day one, Mo, for 400 subscribers. Hey, man. I remember them days, man. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't had no personality, man. I ain't know if I could get on YouTube and be me. So I was just doing recaps. I'd only do one recap a week, man. I ain't even maximize my full potential. i do one video a week thinking I was doing something. Yeah, man, we getting it. It's like, man, fuck that. Nigga. If you want to work, then you need to work. And just like D-Mac, they about to put your ass to work. Put in work. Put in work. What you going to do about that? Put in work. That's what you're going to do. You're going to put in work. Then they got DMAC the hell up out of there. Tommy's like, look, this is for the best. This gets you out the streets. This allows you to eat, sleep, learn everything in safety. Now, send it. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. For DMAC, this is definitely a good avenue for him. Get some out of Chicago. Get some out of Chicago. It's already bad and fucked up. At least Tommy was considerate of uh, the lifestyle that he's living. <laughs> DMAC, it's the farm or ROTC. Hey, I, hey, on some real shit, I'm taking the farm over ROTC. I'm taking the farm over ROTC any day of the week. Any day of the week, I'm taking the farm. Great Shores Youth Academy, bet. I'm taking that, man. Military school, like, no, nah, hell no. Nah. Military school, ROTC, hell no. Nah. I did ROTC for two years. They were mad at me, too. They were mad at me, too, my second year, my sophomore year. I had braids. <laughs> I had braids. Boy, I'm lucky. Like, once we switched schools, I didn't have to do ROTC no more because I didn't have one. But y'all did ROTC, man. That shit was boring as hell, man. I ain't gonna lie, dude. It was a little bit of structure, but shit, I was glad to get about that motherfucker. Because you always hear people say, man, I can't join the military. They can't talk to me like that. I'm like, nigga, please. They gonna talk to you like they talk to everybody else. You ain't nobody special. You ain't about to do nothing. Man, I end up punching one. They gonna be on your ass. They gonna put their foot in your ass. Come on, man. Now, maybe now the military is different, you know, and they can't even, like, curse at the, the trainees and shit, but yeah, yeah. People always say that, man. If I was in there, they couldn't talk to me. Like, okay, they gonna talk to you like that. They gonna talk to you. They gonna talk to you like that. You ain't gonna do shit either. You gonna sit there and you gonna listen to them. 
All right, now we got the Garcia family. And Ruthie says she was in the military. She'll tell you. Everybody do that. Man, they ain't talking to me like that, man. Ooh, boy, I could join. Like, nigga, you could join. Hell, your boss be talking to you better than that at your regular ass job. Nigga, what the fuck you talking about? <laughs> oh, man, it couldn't be me, man. I don't know how you did it. Shit, nigga. I got a check, nigga. What the fuck you mean? I was one of the ones that called the live stream and more when you're first uh, soon reaching 50,000. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, my bad. I knew I knew you'd been in here, Xavier, but you, you know, you've been in my aid for a little bit. We ain't seen you. Welcome back. He said it was nine people watching me. <laughs> hey, you know, shit, man. You know, it don't matter if it's one person in there, man. I'm a, I'm a entertain, man. That's why I, I don't, I like doing this, man. This shit's cool for me. I get to just chill, relax. 